Good morning. Happy Friday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay. Great wrap up to the end of the week. Got a bunch of mentorship calls today, so I'm excited about those. And I got a pretty decent Q&A here from Catherine. Um, so Catherine says, I'm struggling with a patient that literally stands with her pelvis in front of her. Uh, she's an narrow ISA and the typical things that we do in this case are not helping much. She's lost a great deal of internal rotation and external rotation and has a very limited straight leg raise and toe touch. Pretty the feet, the works. She actually said the works. Um, do you have any strategies that may be helpful? Okay, so let's construct this situation first so we have an idea of, of how somebody gets into this position and then we can kind of talk about how we're gonna work our way out of this because it, it'll be a little counterintuitive to, to uh, what you typically think. So if we grab the pelvis here and we can talk about pelvic orientation and position with the understanding that we've got the iteration going on up in the upper thorax. So. Um, we're going to say that this, this person is a narrow ISA. So we have an inhaled position of the pelvis to start, um, which is going to close this lower posterior aspect. So we have an apex of the sacrum that is going to be tucked under. We've got a counter nutated situation. Now, based on her description of how far this person is into this, we also have an anterior and posterior compressive strategy. So the last ERs and IRs. And so what we're going to eventually see then is we're going to see a lot of activity in this lower area. So you're going to get a lot of superficial activity from, say, lower glute max. Upper glute max is going to be compressive. Adductors are going to be compressive from the front side. So, so you, you have somebody that does not have a lot of excursion in, in the hip joints. Um, when you see the loss of the straight leg raise, the, the, the really limited toe touches, you know you've got a lot of muscle activity um, down and through here. You also have the compressive strategies, as we said. Now... <clears throat> So here's end game in this situation. So take every superficial strategy that, that we can imagine um, when we're talking about pelvis and rib cage. And so we got somebody that's, that's, that's pretty much squished kind of like that, okay? And then the last position that they're gonna get into is actually going to be an inhalation compensatory strategy. So, so every other superficial strategy is a compressive strategy for exhalation purposes and to maintain position against gravity um, in the upright. And so the last thing that they're gonna do is they're gonna bend forward at, at about T8. So right at the base of the scapula, they're gonna bend. And so they're, they're gonna have that kind of an orientation on, on the spine. And so this is actually inhalation. So they're actually grabbing the front of the pelvis with rectus abdominis. They're grabbing the front of the pelvis and pulling up, upward. <clears throat> so they're pulling upward on the pelvis. And so they bend at, at that T, T7, T8 um, area on the, on the spine. And that is an inhalation compensatory strategy because think about it, if I squeeze with everything on the outside, I still have to have a way to get air in. Okay, but now you have somebody that has zero rotation. So they're, they're getting pushed into the ground. They're trying to push themselves up with all these compensatory strategies, which is why this person is living in, in, in the world of pronation. So you gotta take gravity out of the equation because that's where the biggest struggle is. So if you try to do anything in these upright positions with this person, at least at, from the get-go, um, you're probably gonna see a lot of struggle because they cannot expand. So the best strategy to, to, to utilize in this situation is put them on their sides. So start working in sideline. So when we started about talking about shifting the pelvis from side to side, doing that in sideline, doing the same thing with the upper thorax. So those of you who have any, any uh, uh, skills in the PNF realm are gonna be very, very useful for this person. So the, the, the scapular PNFs, the, the pelvic PNFs, inside lying are money in this situation. Um, those of you that ever done a Feldenkrais course where you look at the segmental rolling associated with Feldenkrais, also very useful in these situations because what you have to do is you have to teach this person to release the superficial 
compensatory strategies, which are concentric orientation and exhalation all day long. And so no aggressive breathing under these circumstances, a lot of sideline stuff, like I said, a lot of rolling orientations are going to be money here, but you're probably going to have to guide this person at first. And so you're going to have to actually create the ability to turn, but start in sideline, take gravity out of the equation. And I think your success rate is going to going to uh, actually skyrocket under these circumstances. Once you start to recapture the internal and external rotations, then you can probably go back to some of your, your more um, supine, prone, quadruped, supported activities, um, working towards, um, you know, building them up from the, from the ground, so to speak. Um, once they get enough hip flexion, shoulder flexion, you can put them into half kneeling situations, but you're probably always going to want to maintain some sort of asymmetrical uh, representation so you don't lose the ability to turn. Quick review, put them in sideline, start to build the ability to, to turn under those circumstances using your PNF diagonals, they become money in this situation. Superimpose the breathing on top of that, but it has to be this gentle progressive kind of in nature because if you do anything too aggressive, all you're gonna do is squish them back into position. So hopefully, Catherine, I, I, I appreciate your question. I hope that's, that's helpful for you. Hope everybody has a great weekend. I will see you guys next week.